Hello, welcome to The Crap and the Crazy. I am Tash Critter. I have two kids with additional needs, so we have a very neurodiverse household. Between us, we cover autism, ADHD, and PDA. Who knows what else, but there's the diagnosed ones. I have a background in teaching, so I've got a Bachelor of Education, Kindy Tier 7. While I was studying at uni, I worked with over 20 families with kids with additional needs, uh, most of them on the spectrum, but then we had other diagnoses as well. So I was actually going into the homes and seeing what this looked like behind the scenes. Sure enough, then I had my own kids with additional needs. I own and manage Little Wooden Toy Box, so I design all of the resources. I've been doing that for almost 10 years now. So we use these at home and they have been tried and tested by hundreds of other families as well. I also work as a volunteer on the Heroes Program. So this is a one-to-one -one care, um, so a fun event day for kids in the community with additional needs. With my own kids, I've spent over 10 years, almost 700 hours um, in early intervention with speeches, OTs, psychs, physios, the works. Um, and this has given me a unique insight into understanding behaviors of concern, why they occur, what we can do to manage that, tools and strategies that we can use at home, in the classroom, in the therapy room to help work with these kids and understand these kids. My goal is to design and implement resources and coping strategies to make home life calmer and more organized while also helping to educate and encourage parents that are on the same journey as I am. You know, that may be starting this journey as well, whereas I'm 10 years along. Join me as I talk through day-to-day -day life with autism, the sucky bits and the wins, and tips for enjoying life despite the challenges. Hello, welcome to episode 17. This one I have called God in my mess. And this is something that I don't normally talk about. I haven't covered it. I haven't even hinted at it in any of my podcasts. And I was thinking this is one thing that I really rely on to get me through every single day, if not every minute, an hour, and I don't talk about it. And I'm like, yeah, so I may lose some of you just on that title. But for those of you who are interested, and you know, you may never have heard this before, um, just that that reliance every day on trusting someone or something bigger than you that sees the bigger picture that you know you can be in the middle of all your mess whether that looks like or however that looks for you so for me right now looks like single mum two kids with additional needs um, teenagers that's just a whole nother ball game that caught me off guard as well uh, financial stress so half the days I'm praying that the wheels just stay on my car um, and then I've got the business that I'm 10 years into and you know when you just stop and think which I tend not to do but this isn't how I pictured my life at almost 40 yeah and particularly those of you who have kids with additional needs as well when you're changing therapists and running through all your daily struggles which I think as mums or as carers we spend a lot of time not thinking about, yeah? And when you've got your NDIS reports coming up again and going for funding again, and you have to focus over and over on your worst days, and it can get a little bit depressing. Um, so I did want to add this podcast in as far as, you know, having that relationship with God, having... Um, someone that you can trust in when everything just looks awful at times, yeah? And knowing that this isn't how it's always going to be. And I think a big part for me, so, um, and I haven't really covered this either. So obviously my background's in teaching and special needs and I worked with families with additional needs. And, you know, while studying, I had two jobs. So life has always been pretty messy. And I suppose it is for everyone when you're honest. And then making, so, you know, some things, some of your mess is due to consequence and bad choices. So be careful who you marry, not my best choice there. And that's something that, although I'm not in that situation, there are ongoing consequences and there will be because you've got kids with that person, yeah? Um, other things are just, just life happens. So as far as having kids with diagnosis, I know there will be some people out there that believe that's a part of consequence or 
they blame God for that and that's not something that I do I, I just there's no point even going there really um, but we we so often blame God for our mess and don't take responsibility I suppose but then there's other things that life just happens life just sucks sometimes and knowing that God didn't do that to you yeah that's probably one of the first points I want to make God didn't make that happen but no matter how sucky things get God can actually use that so looking through my life like why do I have two kids with additional needs like one would be enough yeah um but also in saying that we have a neurodivergent household yes yeah? so if we did have a neurotypical kid it may not fit in so well you know and look choosing to look at things you know glass half full rather than empty I think that helps a little bit as well but I guess more importantly knowing that everything that I have been through if I choose I can let God use that for good yeah and I think that's you know, 10 years on and it is so hard when you're in the middle of it. And yes, I'm still in the middle of it every day, but I'm a lot better equipped now. So over that 10 years, I've been in all of those therapy appointments and I have loved learning about these kids with additional needs, how we work, how they work. Um, then my, like how I am as far as sensory and emotional regulation as well, so that I can better relate. And then moving into that training space. So being able to teach other people whether they're parents or OTs or speeches about that sensory and emotional regulation and how to better understand and work with these kids without getting frustrated or you know changing your expectations um, and looking at things a different way see I wouldn't have this skill set if I hadn't lived this day in day out for the last well 15 years and then now um, volunteering on that heroes team, being able to give back. So uh, heroes team, that's the Heroes Academy. So we have a play group run every Monday. So this is in Perth. Um, so just having a safe space for families to come who are at the beginning of this journey where their kids can come in with the clothes on backwards or they can lick the walls or they can throw things within reason. So we have... Um, you know, equipped rooms and equipment and whatnot for kids with additional needs. And to be able to give back to these families and not, not in a teaching capacity or that's not what it's for, but to be able to be a part of something where when my kids were in playgroup, we didn't necessarily have that. Yeah. And just that acceptance of other families where they can come in having the worst day and that's completely fine so we have some families where mum just wants to I don't know do her hair because the morning has been that awful that she hasn't had a chance to do her hair and to have you know if I hadn't have been through what I've been through I wouldn't be able to be in a place where you know, I could understand and have empathy for other families going through this. Does this make sense? So as much as things can look or do look awful and painful and they're a struggle, um, we can actually use that to give back and help other people. Yeah. And I feel that's, yeah, kind of where I am now um, versus where Oh, look, it's it's a bit easier to say now when I've actually had sleep. Like the first five years, there was no sleep. Getting back to God, because that, that was the whole point of this, and I go off on a tangent talking about myself. Um, knowing, knowing that, you know, having that relationship with God doesn't fix everything, but knowing that I don't have to do it alone. So also knowing that God meets me wherever I am, and he's, he's not waiting there with a magnifying glass ready to fry me when I screw up, yeah? So knowing that as well, that he's not an angry God just waiting for you to mess up or do things the wrong way, or and like big things, little things, whatever it is. Knowing that he's bigger than that, he's bigger than my mess, being able to rely on him and lean on him for strength and joy and peace and just grace to get through. I'm not even talking getting through big things. I'm talking about waking up in the morning and getting through the day. And just, I guess, that prayer life, which doesn't have to be anything big and extravagant. For me, it looks like, help me, show me, teach me, use me. 
I'm here and just simple little words and phrases. Praying is just talking to God. Yeah, that that's it. And, you know, he knows you inside and out anyway. So there's no point using big fancy words to try and impress him because then there's no point. Yeah, two word prayers are perfectly fine. And that's what he gets in the morning and from day to day, hour to hour, minute to minute. And there are times where, you know, when you're having a really hard day, that's just just that constant relying on him to get through. And I guess it's a centering yourself as well and changing your perspective and choosing in the moment to rely on him to make better choices and have better responses as well, which is why I wanted to cover this topic because yes, I talk so much about emotional regulation and sensory regulation and there's all those different parts of looking after ourselves and understanding other people. But this is a very central one, I suppose. That's not the right word, but hopefully you get what I mean for what I rely on in day-to-day life. All right. I think I've made my point there and I have covered my topics. And look, through all of this, um, knowing that you don't have to have all your ducks in a row. Yeah. Most of the time, I don't know where my ducks are, but that's okay too. Yeah. I am going to leave it there. I will talk to you next week. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any questions. See ya.